AI is delivering some fascinating insights, and one group based out of more fields is providing some new and intriguing discoveries. They were looking into the retinas of patients with Parkinson's. We looked at a data set of people at Moorfields through the outside database, and we looked at people who have Parkinson's disease and what their retinal imaging showed, and we found two main things. One is that people with Parkinson's disease have a thinner ganglion cell in a plexiform layer. And the second thing we found was that they have a thinner inner nuclear layer. Now, the thinner inner ganglion cell in a plexiform layer, that is something we see in various neurological diseases. We see it in multiple sclerosis. We see it in, we can see it after someone's had a stroke. We see it in some brain tumors. And the thinner inner nuclear layer is quite unusual, and that hasn't really been reported in neurological diseases before. And this really excited us because dopamine, the chemical which is affecting the park in Parkinson's disease, is predominantly within that layer, in the inner nuclear layer. The fact that you don't see the thinner inner nuclear layer in, in most neurological diseases make us think that could there be a primary degeneration within the eye happening in people with Parkinson's disease because you don't see it in other neurological diseases. That was the first part of the study. The second part of the study, we did the same thing. But here we just looked at a group of essentially healthy volunteers, let's say, within the UK through a research cohort called the UK Biobank Study. So over half a million people had participated in the UK Biobank Study. 70,000 of them had eye scans taken. So we looked at people with no Parkinson's disease but some of whom developed it in the future. 53 people developed it, I think, in the future over a sort of 15-year period. And actually, those same changes were detectable on average seven years before the clinical presentation. And so it's not just something you see in people with established Parkinson's disease. It's something you see even before they develop it. The group are also looking into other conditions where you might be able to see changes in the retina. So the main focus has been twofold. One is neurodegenerative disease, and in particular dementia. And the second is cardiovascular disease. And by that, I really mean heart attack and stroke, because those are the leading causes of death. We have looked at novel biomarkers, so novel signs of disease within the retina for other conditions, so Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia. We're looking at other conditions like gum disease, for example, gingivitis, bleeding gums affects over 90% of the UK, but in its most severe form, it can lead to loss of teeth. And actually, we're finding, I can't say too much, but we're finding that, you know, there are retinal differences in people who have very severe gum disease. And that makes sense. It's a chronic inflammatory condition. We're looking at other general health conditions like emphysema, inflammatory bowel disease, and how this can be used. I think it's really important to say that Retinal scanning is probably not going to be a diagnostic tool for general health conditions, okay? It's most likely you are someone who may be at higher risk, you need further tests, okay? Or it's someone who maybe already has it, and we want to actually monitor how the disease is progressing or whether they're responding to treatment. Finally, we wanted to know if Siegfried thinks that in the future, retinal scans could be used as a screening tool for the conditions he mentioned. So, uh, Yes, I, I think a screening tool is possible. And the reason I'm saying that is that that's already happening in some parts of the world. OK, I mean, in some senses, you know, people are already screened for di sight threatening diabetes, uh, diabetic eye disease through photographs. Now, they already have a diagnosis of diabetes, but once they have that, you're really going to consider referring someone to a kidney doctor if they've got severe diabetic eye disease changes because they're so likely to develop um, uh, 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 renal failure, kidney failure. Certain parts of Asia, they're already looking at screening through retinal photographs, people for the risk of heart attack and stroke. So there are already places that are looking to get regulatory approval and policy change in the country for things like that. So I do see it happening at some point. I think the UK is really well poised for it because we've got such a brilliant network of primary care optometry for the community. I think that this is probably an ambitious thing to say, but I say that we are slowly moving to a place where you can almost get a quick screen of general health through a single ophthalmic exam. Okay. And that includes retinal imaging. So, you know, my collaborators uh, will often say we, in, you know, in the future, you can 
you, you won't need all those blood tests and brain scans and all that stuff that will be important, but actually there's going to be a huge role for eye exams and eye scans in monitoring general health of people within the community. Uh, and I think that's a really exciting prospect.